Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, and uh, it is uh, good to have you back. Um, so I appreciate you bringing up this timely and important legislation this same. morning. You know, the ranking member just said she wants to, quote, send a clear signal. Uh, I think many of us do. I think all of us do, um, especially after seeing that horrific video this morning of, uh, of those Hamas barbarians uh, coming in uh, to Israel. And those Hamas barbarians were financed primarily by Iran. Um, you know, it, it may seem like a direct response to this, that attack, uh, but let me be clear, um, we've been at this for a while. And sadly, it is the situation that has arisen in, in Israel that, uh, that really has brought this to the forefront. And uh, that is a powerful reminder of the dangers posed by Hamas and others that, uh, that Iran finances. So in fact, this bill, this concept was first introduced back in the 114th Congress, uh, myself and my colleague, Mr. Sherman, and we even received a bipartisan vote on the House floor. And while the bill has had a few uh, iterations, the goal remains the same. Uh, H.R. 5921 does exactly what it says. It attempts to stop Iran from being able to use our financial system while ensuring that institutions under our committee's jurisdiction keep their distance from the government of Tehran. As we all know, Iran remains one of the most heavily sanctioned countries in the world. However, the Treasury Department retains broad discretion to license activities by U.S. persons. Uh, since many of our blocking sanctions have been imposed, imposed through executive orders, not through law. H.R. Uh, 5921 does three main things. First, it prohibits Treasury from issuing licenses that allow U.S. financial institutions to enable trade with Iran. Now, there's a couple of very uh, uh, significant uh, uh, exceptions to that. Other than, and I'm quoting from the, the, from the bill itself, this is in section two, other than the sale of agricultural commodities, food, medicine, medical devices, or humanitarian assistance benefiting the civilian population of Iran, close quote. Uh, the second uh, is that it further cuts off financing for Iran from the world's lender of last resort, the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. While Iran is not currently seeking assistance from the fund, it certainly could as an IMF member country. My bill makes it clear that the United States, as the IMF's largest shareholder, will oppose any such request. This prohibition would further extend to the IMF Special Drawing Rights Program, or SDRs as they're commonly referred to, which Iran actually accessed in 2021 to the tune of $5 billion. Now, Section 3 makes it clear that this is only applies to Iran, not other countries, as, as some have asserted. So just last week, the House adopted a similar prohibition introduced by my colleague from Arkansas, Mr. Hill, as part of the financial service and general government appropriations debate. And lastly, my bill extends an existing prohibition against export-import bank financing for Iran. This codification is similar to the language introduced in my original le uh, legislation. I do want to note one exception that we've included in the bill before us today, and it's an important one. Uh, U.S. law has long exempted humanitarian assistance from sanctions so as not to punish innocent civilians. My bill tightens the grip on the Ayatollahs, on the government itself, but it licenses for humanitarian aid to ordinary Iranians will be continued uh, to be permitted. This is as clear as the day on the text of the bill. So Mr. Chairman, when our fellow Americans deposit their earnings in a U.S. bank or entrust the government with their tax dollars, they do so assuming that the money will not be used in ways which undermine the security of our country or the security of our allies. These are common sense but long overdue prohibitions, and we are really taking what some would say is policy and we're codifying it. We're making it the law. And I urge swift passage of the No Financing for Iran Act and uh, I, I yield back the balance of my time.